All right, so we have our spring. Now, must cut it into rings. Jeez, oh, yeah, there we go. So, uh, this is a typical wire cutter, but uh, as you see, I put some rope on it uh, because uh, it have uh, rubber bands on it, but they deteriorated. So the point here is that it's really difficult to cut this so your hand will start to hurt if there isn't something soft here and I also wouldn't recommend doing this on the table use something hard like maybe your leg and push it down on it or sometimes if you want to simplify your job just Pull it a bit, so distance between uh, should be larger. So you could cut one at a time here, but on it. I hope you can see this on the time here. But it will take really, really long time. So I recommend using two or three. Probably, probably three will be much much more difficult but uh, you slowly ah, get the hang of this it seems difficult because I'm trying to do this on the table but when I do this on my leg let's say you already cut this like I have So, now I'll show different styles of chainmail patterns. So I've shown before is like the typical, like one in four style, the basic uh, chainmail structure I use. Then I also have one in six, it, it almost feels like double layered. I hope you can see this. I really can't look at the camera. And this is one in eight, which is like, say, triple layered, like mega layered. I don't know how to. Use. So, I usually use larger rings for this. So, for a basic beginner, I'll show you how to make this because it's uh, far more visible. Uh, because the first time I start and try to make the rings, I had a really hard time conceptualizing it and uh, made a lot of mistakes uh, but maybe let's just start from the most basic style of ring making which is this like hexagonal one, one ring here the other rings around it this is the most basic uh, of the basic ring types which were historically really rarely used because it leaves large holes even this is much better because I have large washers here to um, fill up the space. But like regular one and four, it's quite, quite, quite unreliable. But something like this, let's say, like I'll show the most basic version. Here's like I hope you can see this. Look into the camera. Here, here it is like four base rings and four combining rings. Uh, if you use like maybe larger rings, you know, let me show you. Space is filled out with the larger rings and it looks relatively better. And if you add a bit here as well. There you go. So, such pattern actually 
fills the whole thing up and I think uh, speaking of uh, the Japanese they actually did use something like this larger rings and smaller rings combined fills the space up here's like the first version a bit larger and there are some holes here but it works kinda and here is like I also used flat chains for this but still more filled out more patterned right? I think it's much better I'm making something interesting with this type of structure because like I didn't actually make those rings I just bought chains and I bought washers and the idea is like uh, armor you can make uh, with just the things you can buy in the hardware store right? or I don't know what it's called in your country I just buy it from fat old man <laughs> uh, in the bazaar in the bizarre bazaar so here's the basic structure um, I'm trying to experiment with the washers and rings and different things to like for example here I'm trying to make ring mail but like more realistic or like more useful ring mail it's like kind of interesting now the full piece would be much more interesting in detail okay.